Hey everybody, it's Lewis Porter Jr. It is, of course, Thursday, July 28th. Oh, one week until Gen Con. I know a lot of people are excited. They're getting ready. They're doing all kinds of cool stuff. And everybody's getting their stuff together. I'm taking kind of the you know, opposite take. I've got projects to do that I'm just like, I'll do it eventually. <laughs> so, as I tell you how I'm feeling, oh, I think I'll say yes to that. So I'm also checking my mail, because apparently now I'm back up to 64 emails, which I don't understand how I get so many emails all the time. I don't understand this, why I get so many emails, like, all the time. This is, like, crazy to me. So many emails. You know, it's just ridiculous. So, yeah, so Gen Con, you know, a week away. I've heard a lot of people talk about they're getting ready, and they're getting ready to go. They got their stuff together. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of disappointing that I'm going to miss it again but you know these things happen you know look i'm a i'm a single father and the most important thing to me is my son and making sure he's okay and you know that does have downsides and one of the downsides you got to pick and choose what you can do to and like i said eventually lucas will be you know as of a reasonable age he's only six now the con might be a little too much for him plus you know he's got the whole um seizure thing so we always have to keep it very very safe and very very close by and I'm sure I will change that in the future, but like right now, I'm going to miss out, and the thing I'm really going to miss most about not going this year is, um, you know, Steve's, uh, I guess you'd call it uh, Irish, an Irish wake, it's an Irish wake, so just talk about them, you know, you know, it's, it's, we have such a small community in gaming and stuff, so it's so, I mean, it's so small, we all know each other, you know, we know a lot of us know each other very, very well, so it's like, hey, you know, let's interact more and stuff like that. And that's something I don't do enough of. I mean, look, I do this semi-daily show. I get the, you know, four days a week show. But I don't think I talk to enough people enough. I don't think I can get out enough. It's just, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's tough. It's tough to do that and do, really get involved with people the way you'd really like to. Just, you know, time's a killer. You gotta make, you gotta make time for it. You really gotta make time for it. You gotta make a lot of time if you want to be a real, you know, a real good person, you know? It's just, it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. Things like this happen. So I'm not going to get into that. But I will talk about the fun stuff going on. I think there's going to be a lot of cool games going on. I think there's going to be a lot of cool events going on. Um, I know I know there's a lot of stuff going on with Pathfinder. So, of course, we'll talk about Pathfinder. I'm sure 5e with Watsi will have something very cool going on. Uh, I'm sure buddies at Paradigm Concepts will have something cool. Also, our buddies at Alligator Alley will have something cool. God, now i got to write all these guys in our names and our notes. I just realized that when I said it all like that, I'm like, ugh, the other problem. So, here's something else. I've been doing this uh, daily show every night via this um, Facebook, which apparently I like. I like it a lot. There's some stuff I really like about it. There's some stuff I don't like about it. I think uh, I, I, the stuff I like, I like the stuff I don't like, I really don't like. But it is what it is. You know, this is what this is what is being done. I wish there was a way to, to do this with my regular computer. The reason being, you know, it kind of restricts me. It kind of restricts me on what I'm doing, you know, on type notes, that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I like I like doing like a hangout, but I don't like how hangouts are handled. I think it, it's not it's not perfect yet. It's not to the point where I'm happy with it yet. So, you know, it, what I want, I'm sure hasn't even been really made yet. But I think this is a great idea. I think this is a great idea for people who you know, want to start their own thing. It's, you know, if you've, if you've wanted to get into gaming and get in out there and get people interested, this is, this is great. I mean, look, I got a little tiny screen, I shoot this thing, the video goes up, it's all live, my, my stuff's over here, I'm watching my kung fu movie over here, you know, it's, 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 it's very cool, you know, I, I think it is a great way to get people interested in your products and your ideas. So, if you're not doing it and something you should be doing, I think everybody should do it. Every, Publishing companies should be doing like this. If you go to Gen Con and you don't do a live thing, you should you tell them, hey, you know, Thursday at 9 o'clock, we're going to do a live post. We're going to get this bar or this place, you know. Doing a live show. Come check us out. We're going to be here. You're going to love it. If you don't do that at PaizoCon, you're going to fail. It's an easy thing to do. It takes two seconds. Boom, boom. Hold it up. There I am. Da -da 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 -da. And talk to people. I mean, come on, dude. Talk to people that come by. And then you basically take everything you get, 
put the content together either you know using some kind of video program there's so many programs out there now it's ridiculous i'm using premiere because i'm an adobe guy so i just have it so just you know put it together boom 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 put it out do youtube or your own stuff or facebook and you know you do that you know if you are like starting even starting even starting out in this if you're doing it think about ways you can put your like you know all you know behind the scenes stuff I think people are fascinated when they find out what really goes on behind the scenes. I still want to do a meeting. I, I, I wanted to for a very long time. Videotape a meeting of us at, you know, what's going on here, the whole thing. Because I think people would find it very, 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 very interesting to see how professional it can be and how non-professional it can be. I mean, come on, we're gamers, we have fun. But it's also, you know, I, I create things that I find interesting. If I find something interesting, hey, I'm gonna make it. That's that's why I do that. You know, that's 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 how I that's how I did it. That's the idea I get behind. So it can easily be done. So I just think people need to attempt and just do stuff. Yeah, that's just me. So let's go on let's see what's going on in the world. The gaming world that is, because you know, what's going on in the political world? Look. I'm not watching any of this stuff. I've already seen it. Like I said, everybody knows I'm a poli-sci major. Got my degree in it. I'm fascinated by it. But all they're doing is putting out speeches. And people pick their sides who they pick. There's only people on the fence who are deciding, kind of not sure what to do. Everybody else has kind of made the decision. So, you know, those, that 20%, you figure out what you all want to do. And now we'll figure out how the this rest of this election is going to happen. But I'm not going to get too excited about that. You know, plus, this is like this is the beginner rounds. It's the debates that are going to be awesome. Oh, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Uh, let's find out. Um, some news today. Roll twenty. Uh, I'll put this. Actually, I'm put a link to this. Uh, because you know, some people don't realize. You know, where you your, your news from. Ian World has a lot of good news on a daily basis. It's something I check out on a regular basis. I think everyone should. There's good stuff. There's just some stuff that happened. I guess this week and today. Uh, one of the big ones I found out today. I guess I, I guess I gotta put this in now. Uh, Sasquatch Game Studios is gonna be doing Alternity, which um, it was kind of a surprise. How I found out about um, uh, Owen T.C. Stevens, another name I gotta write, but <laughs> was just talking about, oh, so many games coming out this year, I can't wait, including, and he said, including Alternity. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not coming out. And I was like, wait a minute, does he know something I don't know? And apparently he did, because yes, the guys at Sasquatch are gonna be doing Alternity. Uh, I don't know what game system they're using, I don't even think they know. But, you know, whatever it's gonna be is interesting. It's, you know, it's gonna be interesting. And, you know, I think it's, it's just basically the same guys who made it are the ones who are doing it. So, yeah, this could be, this could be like, awesomely cool. I assume it's going to be awesomely cool. Let's just not kid anybody. It's going to be awesomely cool. But it's like, I wonder, I'm hoping, you know, maybe it'll be for Starfinder. Maybe it'll do a Starfinder version. I don't know. But I'm hoping that it's just cool. As long as it's cool, I'm cool. You know, just give me D20 Modern. Somebody do D20 Modern or Pathfinder Modern or whatever you want to call it so I can... Make some modern games, because that's what I'm really waiting for, I'm not going to lie. I am 100% waiting for that stuff to happen, because that is the stuff that interests me more than anything. So, oh, I, oh, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. So, yeah, that's going on there. Uh, some other new stuff. Uh, no, no, basic stuff. Um, oh, I guess, well, I, I'm not talking about that. It's 5e. Like I said, I, I don't... I'm not a fan of 5e, so it's not like I'm going to not promote it, but I'm just not promoting things I don't care about. You know, it doesn't affect me like, like that. So, if it doesn't affect me, yeah, I just don't care that much about it. Sorry it sounds harsh to say it like that, but it's true. I mean, look, I made this podcast for guys at Pathfinder. Now, there's information you can get off here that's, in, that's informative. But, yeah, you know, my main focus has been and always will be, you know, for now, Pathfinder, I've included, you know, comic books. That's been, you know, because I love comic books. Plus, a lot of good stuff you can just learn from that. You know, uh, you know, that, that's for me. I mean, that's just for me. That's my choices. Uh, doing Owen's, putting Owen's link in here for the notes, so we can have lovely notes here. So I don't forget what I talk about. Because, you know, I talk about a lot of stuff. So, there you go. But, but yeah, I think Gen Con this year is going to be another solid year. Uh, you know, I, I think this is an opportunity, if, if this is your, if you're going to Gen Con because you've never been before, I think it's a great thing to do, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it very much when I went, I thought it was a lot of fun, there's a lot of cool stuff to do, and it can be, like, really tiresome. I, you know, it's, it's amazing how tired you can get, um, you know, just having fun. <laughs> you know, it sounds silly, but yeah, I mean, you walk, you walk, you, you know, you gotta get, you gotta get in some kind of shape. 
that's a lot of walking. There's a lot of walking that gets done. So do yourself a favor, get kind of in shape. You know, do a little bit of walking before if you haven't done any work. You know, boom. Uh, okay. How would you recommend making the most of your time? This is my first time. Okay. If you are going as oh well sorry how do you, how do you, how would you recommend making the most of Gen Con if it's your first time? My first time I went, I just really tried to absorb as much of what's going on because there's ten million things going on and ten million things from all different places that you, things you may may or may not have heard of. So so much is going on, you can get overwhelmed. Uh, what I did, and I I think it's it, this is me. This is just very me. I say you take the book they give you and this and mark out things you want to do. Certain things that just catch your eye, like oh I want to check that out. I want to check that out. I want to check that out. Do a lot of that. That's a great way to go to start. Find out what you really like because you can easily get overwhelmed and just kind of schedule your day like that. You know, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, a lot of good stuff going on too. So it's like, oh, I don't want to miss this thing. I don't want to miss that thing. And you know, it's 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 a lot of fun. But you know, it's a lot of walking. It's a lot of walking. Man, it's like wear comfortable shoes. Find some comfortable shoes. Some people don't do that. Some people are like, oh, I don't care about the shoes I wear. It doesn't matter. I'm like, no, man. Buy some comfortable shoes because your feet are going to be killing you. And, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, okay, everybody knows I live in South Florida. So I'm, I usually wear shorts 90% of the time. I'm wearing shorts. And, you know, short, short sleeve shirt. This is hot. And I wear, like, either um, sandals or flip-flops. Really more sand. I'm more of a sandals guy than a flip-flop guy. And if you don't know the difference, well, then you just don't know the difference. So... <laughs> So, I wear a lot of sandals, and they don't have the best comfort. But, I mean, if you're going to do, you know, Gen Con with that kind of big floor, man, you know, try to find something that's going to just help your feet out. Because that can be a beast. I mean, uh, you're standing for so long, you forget how long you're standing, and your feet start really uh, aching, and, oh, uh, it it's a beast. It's a beast, man. You know, it's, it's tough. You're going to be doing a lot of walking. And um, something I can't suggest enough, find a way to bring your own food. Because holy cow, man, what is up? Look, I understand what the price of thing is, but I really can't stand the price of thing. That has always irked me. As whenever I go to cons of any place, it's just like, oh, the con costs you thirty-five bucks to get in, and a hot dog is thirty-five dollars. And I'm like, why is a hot dog so much? It's a hot dog, you know. It's like that hot dog is not that great hot dog. But they got you, you know. The, that's it. They got you hostage, so they're gonna abuse you any way they want. But that's that's always been one of my ugh, irked me to death. Like, oh, I think I'm going to charge you $17 for a hot dog. You want some coffee? It's $12. And the cup's like yay big. I mean, look, I got a mug. I got my mug full of tea. Mmm. The big thing of tea that I bought today, uh, what tea was it? I forgot what tea it is. It's like yay big. It was two bucks, man. Boom. That's two bucks. That same thing there would cost you $70. It's such a ripoff, man. Holy cow. Scott, let me tell you, it's not just big city prices. It's big city stick em up prices. I'm like, holy cow. Put your hands in the sky, reach up, you know, boom. Let me take your money. I mean, you know, like I said, I've, look, I've done cons in New York City where... <laughs> okay, funny con story. So a buddy of mine, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Sanger, Matt and I used to go to cons a lot. We used, I grew up in Connecticut, so I'd take the train, we'd go to New York City, we'd go to cons. Very common, no big thing. And we've been to the Dick and Javits Center so many times, it's kind of ridiculous how many times we've been there. It's like, oh my God, this is like the early 90s and stuff. So one time, uh, Matt and I went, and I'll never forget this. We were doing something. I think we were working, I think doing CVM. I can't even remember. And we were starving. I mean, we were like so hungry. I've never been this hungry in my life before. So we are like, oh, we can eat the, we'll eat the Dick and Javits Center. We'll find something there to eat. And everything was like $12 for a hot dog. And I was like, oh God, we can't do it. We couldn't, I mean, this was when I was in my 20s. I didn't have a lot of money. So I'm like, oh, God, we're not going to do this. I just, I, I fundamentally can't do this. So we walked outside the center and walked across the street. And this was construction. This is a long time ago. So this is like, you know, 20 plus years ago. And we mm -hmm. found a hot dog stand. Now, look, New York hot dog stand, you take your chance. You take a chance. I, you know, I'm used to them. I, well, I was. I, I, you know, but we were so hungry. We were like, screw it. We need a hot dog cart. I don't even care. And I'll never forget that day where we ate. It was crazy. We both had, we had the exact same thing. This would be so great. We were so hungry. We ate like two huge hot dogs. I think they, almost, I think they might have been foot long hot dogs. That's how big it was. Like, we ate two hot dogs. I'm like, oh, that was so good. And then we both had a knish. And like, oh, it's, it's like, <laughs> it was like we'd never seen food before. And, you know, it was like, oh, this is the best. Oh, my God. I've never, I've never eaten this well ever. And, you know, it's, dude, it's New York hot dog stand, you know, but it was great. But it also cost us 
for the, I think for the two hot dogs and the knish, it was like 10 bucks. And a soda, of course, yeah, soda. It was like 10 bucks. And I'm like, Jesus, man, one hot dog was there and cost you 10 bucks. Mm. It was just crazy. Those were good times. Those were good times. Little Maddie Sanger and me. Uh, <laughs> good times. Good times. Oh, yeah. Whew. Yeah, I did. Oh, God. I, yeah, I, I, I've, I've always been a fan of cons. I like cons. I like especially cons I can drive to. Um, one of the best locations that I lived in for cons, without a doubt. And this is, and this is funny, but you, you, people, some people will laugh at this. was Baltimore. Um, living in Baltimore, you were really strategically really close to a lot of cons. For example... Um, from my hometown, I, I, I'm from a little hometown called Danbury, Connecticut. It's right across the line in New York City. Um, you know, oh, not New York City, uh, New York State. Um, it's, it's a tiny town. It's a tiny little town, you know, right on the border. It's a border town, New York. It's been there forever. Uh, Danbury is famous for their hats. We were famous for, like, centuries for hats. Right, you know, that's what we did. Including, oh, this always disturbs me, my high school's team were the Hatters, and they finally had the common decency they changed it to the Mad Hatters, because at least that was kind of cool. But, oh, Danbury Hatters. But, laugh all you want, our wrestling team was undefeated for 20 years. Now, here I just said, undefeated, no losses, 20 years. They dominated wrestling. If you're a wrestling, if you're a wrestling in Connecticut, we were a powerhouse. You were going to lose to us. You are going to lose. 20 years. Just, just lost. It's amazing. So, here's a little fact. So, you know, four hours away from Baltimore would be um, Connecticut. So, you can do a lot of cons in four hours. I mean, if from Baltimore, you can get to Philly. Philly was an hour and a half. Delaware was an hour. Uh, D.C. was, eh, 45 minutes with the traffic. You know how that goes. Virginia, depending where in Virginia you might go, you get two hours, like Northern Virginia. There's a lot of different places you can go. And, you know, New Jersey. The, it was just It's just geographically kind of perfectly centered. Plus, the cons that come to Baltimore were pretty good. Um, plus, they also had a lot of good local cons. Plus, you know, at the, at, at, well, at the time still, today, the Armory, well, the Armory's not there anymore. It's uh, Alliance. But as the Armory was there, um, Diamond Comics is there. So, you know, there's tons of comic book stores. And, I mean, oh, God, there's a lot of, there's a lot of comic book stores in, in Baltimore. Not a lot of great ones. Well, let me phrase that. When I was there, there's not a lot of great ones. I don't know if they've gotten better. I assume they've gotten better. There's that, um, see, now, put up Google Maps. This will be fun for all you people, because I haven't been here. So, I, and also, a lot of people don't know, I have family that live in Maryland still. You know, my, my brother lives up there with his wife. So, I don't get there as often as I should. I haven't been there. I haven't actually seen, seen them in a couple of years. Was Carla pregnant with Lucas? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been up there actually since Lucas has been born. Ooh, just, but they've come down to see us because, let's be honest, would you rather go to Baltimore for vacation or South Florida? The end. So, <laughs> that's how that goes. Plus, my parents live down here now, too, so it's just easier for my brother to come see us. So, um, oh, Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore. Well, so, the area of Baltimore is pretty, you know, it's, it's, it's a vast area. There's a lot of stuff going on, and Baltimore's an interesting town. Just, that's how you say it. And then you get, like, between Baltimore and D.C., Washington, D.C., of course, there's just a lot of cool stuff going on. Actually, there's... So if you go on Google Maps and just put in the word comics and just do like Baltimore, DC, and you have a lot of stuff pop up, like Third Eye Comics. I, I don't know anything about Third Eye Comics personally, but I see their ads a lot, so I know they're very serious. You know, they're serious about comics. They're they're, they're doing a lot of comics. Um, in the DC area, you have um, Blink, uh, Big Planet Comics. Actually, I've never been there. Alliance Comics, Another Big Planet, Victory Comics, uh, Comics and Gaming Fairfax. I think I've been to there. Um, because, no, little known fact, for a year and a half, was it? I think it was like a year and a half. For a year and a half, I lived in Vienna, Virginia, back in the, wait, wait, uh, late 70s? Yeah, was it late 70s? There, no, it was like 76, yeah, 76 to 77 kind of thing. Or was it even later than that? Look, it's been near 40 years, I can get it wrong, it's not a big deal. But that was a you know that was always a nice area. I always liked that area. Um, I've also mm -hmm. liked DC in general. If anybody wants to know, anybody looking, uh, if you find a position that may be cool, I went. I could maybe leave leave South Florida. And don't get me wrong, it's gonna take me a lot to leave South Florida because it was fantastic. But like you know, I would I would move back to DC. I've always loved that area, so I'd, I'd move back there. It's it's an awesome area. It's got a lot of stuff. Plus, I can get some decent seafood. Ugh, good lord, South Florida seafood. 
Chesapeake Bay seafood. If anyone has any mercy on me, find some Maryland blue crab, send a couple to me. You know, it's it's like the seafood down here. It's oh god, it's not it's not Chesapeake Bay seafood. I can't get decent fried clams down here to save my life. I mean, don't get me wrong, they got fried conch, which is tasty, but it's no fried clams. This is oh good lord. The thing is, you don't realize you miss till you leave. So, I'm just chill. So there's Comic So Astonish. I know that place. That's in um, near Columbia, Maryland. I know it very well. You know, family, family near there. And there's tons of places in Baltimore for stuff. Cons are a lot of fun. But this one, you can live in a city that you can go see a lot of them. I think, you know, it's just, you need a city. I mean, New York has a lot of cons. Philadelphia has a lot of cons. You know, uh, even like Allentown has some decent cons. It's just depending where you live. And I've been thankful, knock on wood, I've lived to a lot of places that had easy access by driving and sometimes by flying to um, get good cons. Um, so yeah, but South Florida, we are actually we're actually developing cons. It's kind of like, you know, getting better, but it's still not perfect. Uh, Scott, I've hit two of this big three, Seattle, New Orleans. Yeah, I, I've never done a con in Boston. I mean, I've, I've been to Boston. Boston is not one of my favorite cities. Uh, everybody knows I'm not a big fan of Boston. Not at all. Not at all. Good Lord. Um, I've been to Seattle. It was, it was, I did PaizoCon, which was quite nice, I must say. Um, Seattle as a town is very interesting. I think I, I'd like to vacation out there to see what's really going on. But even the short time I was there, I was very impressed. I had some, I had some great food, some great Chinese food I've never had before, which I thought was, you know, I can't say it was Chinese food. Oh, I assume it was Chinese. Well, it was a Japanese restaurant that served Chinese food. But the food was good. I enjoyed the food. It was very kind of, uh, interesting very different probably one of the more different towns i mean like everybody knows i'm an east coast boy you know basically almost born and bred but definitely bred so i love the east coast so going out to the west coast is a very big thing for me and, you know i usually don't I, I mean i've been to la which was not my cup of tea uh i still want to go to san francisco so let's go to san francisco there's some great cons there and got a lot of gamers out there want to check that stuff out plus uh black diamond is out there and i see now i gotta put them in there I said black diamond black diamond uh, games is out there want to check out that store and, you know it's, you know, there's stuff going on there. But Seattle was very nice. And New Orleans, holy cow. Holy cow. I, look, I went to New Orleans for a business trip. And I had the best thing I've ever eaten in my entire life there. Uh, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell you the story. It's going to be real short. But I know you guys are like, oh, this is going to bore the hell out of you. But this is a great story. You're going to love it. So I'm staying downtown. Um, I'm right near the French Quarter. Uh, I was staying at the Hilton. And, I'm, and, and I can't remember, I hope somebody from New Orleans is on this, they can, they can point it out to him. I'm staying at the Hilton, and next door was a place to eat. And I asked, you know, that's the nature of the, hey, what's a good place to eat? You know, any place in New Orleans is good. My parents also just happened to live in New Orleans, but not at the same time I was there. Just one of those kind of weird coincidences. My dad's like, don't worry, wherever you go in New Orleans, you're going to love the food. I'm like, that's almost impossible. But I'm like, oh, whatever, let me check it out. So I asked the major, he goes, go next door, you're going to have a great meal, you'll love it. I'm like, okay, no problem. Went there, meal was great. I was like, wow, this is great food. I can't remember what I ate, but I know it was great. It was, like, it was great. But here's where it got interesting. I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I'd like to have dessert. He's like, well, have you, you know, he's like, you want something different? I'm like, well, you know, I want something very, very New Orleans. What would you suggest? He's like, ah, I'll get the house special. I'll get the house special for you. I'm like, okay, what's the house special? And he tells me this, and you're going to understand, I haven't told you yet, but you're going to understand why I made this face. He's like, we've well, got a great thing that's a great dessert. You're going to love it. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. And he told me what it was. And then I made this face of, I'm sorry, what'd you say? It was seafood cheesecake. Those two words don't go together ever. Ever, 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 ever. Cheesecake and seafood are not words that go together. It sounded, I'm like, oh my God, that sounds horrible. He's like, trust me, it'll be the best thing you've ever eaten. And I'm like, dude, I've eaten a lot of food. I'm a big guy. I've eaten a lot of food. I like food, you know. So I'm like, are you kidding me? Seafood cheesecake is like, trust me. Because if you don't like it, you don't have to pay for it. Because trust me, you're going to love it. I'm like, all right. You know, whatever, man. Just bring it bring it on. Let's see how awesome this thing is. Because you're talking a lot of smack. So I can't believe it can't be that good. He puts it down. And you look at it. It's creamy. It looks like cheesecake. You know, so it looks like cheesecake. You're like, okay, well, all right. Well, let me taste it. Put the fork in. Same consistency of cheesecake. Boom. Put it in my mouth. It was the best thing I've ever eaten dessert-wise. I mean, I've eaten things all over the... Well, not all over the planet. Well, not all over the planet. Jesus, not everywhere in the planet. But I've eaten a lot of places. I eat, I eat a lot. I like food. So I'm, I'm a big foodie. I'll eat anything. I'll, I don't think... 
This was the best thing I've ever eaten. Especially the dessert side. Dessert side, boom. Bar none. Bam. This is, I, let me tell you how good it was. I ate this stuff roughly six, seven years ago. I'm still talking about it. The only thing I talk about more than this is, and this cheesecake, I mean, cheese, Sufi cheesecake. I don't know the name of the restaurant. It's right next door to the Hilton, downtown New Orleans. So if you're downtown New Orleans, you're staying at the Hilton, go, like, here's the Hilton. Boom. Next place, right there. That's where you go get the food. It was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, it was it was awesome. But dude, I mean, New Orleans has great food. Where I mean, I went to I went to a hole in the wall, and then it was like it was awesome. I I found out what a po a po boy was. I didn't. I was like, what's a po boy? And they're like, oh, you gotta have a po boy. I'm like, oh, it's a sandwich, but it's their sandwich. It was an awesome sandwich. I mean, you know, true man. New Orleans is the type of place that when you eat there, you gotta be prepared to eat. It's serious. It's serious. Mm -hmm. It's definitely. I would say if you're into food, check it out. You'll love it. Um, see, see, I get, see, cons, food, fun stuff, it all connects. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, New Orleans, I'd, I'd go back for food, it was awesome, good food, man, I like the good food. Food is so good, yeah. Um, oh, best burgers, best burger I ever had, and this is, the, and this is the only thing I wish from the West Coast, the only thing, In-N-Out Burger. In-N-Out Burger, still the best burger I've ever had, had that on my honeymoon with my wife, <laughs> <laughs> I'd read about In and Out for years. I always heard about it, but I'd have to be like, I'm on the East Coast. I don't, we don't have it out here. So people saying, "Oh, when you got the West Coast, you gotta go." And I'm like, "Is it really that good?" They're like, you gotta go In and Out, man. That's an awesome burger. And I'm like, "Well, it's, it's a burger. What do I know? It's a burger." So um, we got to In and Out, and well, let me phrase it. I asked the guys on the strip because I play. If you didn't know, I'm, I, I like gambling. Um, FYI, uh, I like gaming so much. A lot of people don't know this. I went to Vegas on my honeymoon. I told my wife I'd pay for everything. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. She's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to pay for my winnings and gamble. She's like, oh, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm that good of gambling. I, I paid for their entire trip with my gambling profits. Yeah, you know, I, I gamble. You know, that's why I'm hoping maybe one day to be gambling. And I mean, like, craps. I play craps. That's my, I don't play blackjack or stuff like that. I play craps. I'm a craps player. Let me rephrase that. I'm a craps winner. Some people are craps player. I'm a craps winner. So, I enjoy craps. You want to play some craps? In Vegas, boom. That's my thing. So, we did that. And we took some of the winnings. We were down the strip. Just having a good time. You know, just doing what we do. And then we asked a couple guys locally there. See, Scott? Good man. <laughs> the local guys, hey, you know, where's in and out I've always wanted to have one. They're like, oh, you got to have in and out Well, first, before I had the in and out I had a fat burger, which I'd never had in my life before. First of all, I'm a big fan of burgers. Everybody knows I like burgers. But the egg on top of the burger, I love that. That's a great, that's a West Coast thing. I got to give them all credit. That's an awesome, that's an awesome addition to a burger. Egg on top, bingo. I tell you, that's how you do it. So then we said, hey, keep, like we, we were actually, we were, we were walking the strip. We were trying to get back to, we were staying at the, oh God, I can't think of it now. It was off the strip. It's right across the street from the Palm, the Orleans. Thank you. The Orleans. And we're at the Orleans, and and I'm like, we're, we're taking a taxi back, and I tell the taxi, I'm like, hey, can you stop at in and out Burger? I've never had it. You know, can you stop? He's like, yeah, I can stop. No problem. You want, I'm like, you want me to get you the Yeah, give me a burger. And so I go inside, and, and oh, I forgot to tell you, the guy in the strip was telling me, he's like, look, when you go to in and out order a uh, double-double animal style. I'm like, double-double animal style. He's like, yeah, that's, that's it. Trust me. Trust me. You order that, you'll be good. I'm like, all right, double-double animal style. So I go in, mm -hmm. and I knew about in and out and their secret menu and all that stuff. I was, I was kind of fascinated. So I was like, okay, double-double animal style. I got one for me, one for Carla. I got fries, animal, you know, animal style, the fries on there. Boom. That was the best burger I ever ate. I mean, that was um, that was the best hamburger I ever eaten. And I, that's something I hate the West Coast. The West Coast was that in and out burger. And they ever franchise it to here, I'll be as fat as a pig. But the man, oh, man, oh. And it wasn't that expensive for a burger, too. It's not like, you know, these, I have a $12 burger. No, this is like a dirt cheap burger that was awesome tasting. It's like, bam. Yeah, they got that. So, West Coast, man. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've, I've done a lot of cons all over. It's definitely the East Coast, so. Whew, there's so many good places to do cons. I mean, you know, live in New England, the Mid-Atlantic States, you, you can do cons forever. You don't ever have to really leave. I mean, New York City, everybody comes to New York City to do a con. You know, gaming, I mean, PAX is now there. You know, I left. I left Connecticut. Okay, I left Connecticut for in in 1988 to go to, to go to Baltimore to go to school. I came back to Connecticut in '93. I left finally in '96 to go back to Baltimore, and then I left Baltimore. And, and I think it was all of '96, and, and got in Baltimore. Like, I mean, left Baltimore, to go to Indianapolis in '97, 
And at that time, you know, Gen Con hadn't moved there yet. So I was traveling. I did Origins a couple times. And Origins was a very nice show. You know, it wasn't that far. It's like, it was like two hours, three hours from Indianapolis. A real simple drive, man. Just a straight drive. Boop. If you live in Indianapolis, going to Origins was, a, was an easy con. And it's a good con to go to. Good gaming con. Not like just role playing, but good games, family. It's a it's, it's a different feel than Gen Con. Gen Con is more of the party, beer, uh, bar con, that kind of stuff. But Origins felt very very family focused. So if you're gonna be doing that kind of stuff, I always suggest people go out to Origins. is a great con for that. Uh, the con I haven't done down here that I want to do, uh, Dragon Con, which is so weird since I have like family in um, Columbus. Columbus is it Origins in Columbus? Columbus is Origins. Yes, Scott. Columbus is. I say Cleveland. I meant Columbus. Columbus. Uh, Dragon Con. Uh, in Atlanta, I have two sides of my family there. You know, the Porter side, the Shaper side. They're, you know, they're, they're there. They're there. And I don't, you know, I, said, I don't, I haven't got up there to see them. I need to, I need to go. And it's relatively close. It's eight hours. But usually, you know, you, as you know, if you drive in Florida, you can drive for eight hours in Florida and not leave the state. And that can be a little, you know, chilling <laughs> to people driving. I mean, good Lord, that's a lot of driving. So, you know, I just, it, it's, a, it's a tough drive, but, you know, but, you know, the three cons, if you're, if you're serious about doing gaming cons, gotta, gotta do Dragon Con, gotta do Origins, gotta do Gen Con. That's not even a question anymore. And depending where you are in the country, um, you know, for comic books, San Diego, of course, but, you know, I, I, I've never been to San Diego, I've always, I've, I've missed it for various reasons, but, I, and I don't know if I'm ever going to go, but, you know. You try Nebraska, yeah. I guess Nebraska doesn't really great on cons, too. Yeah, Nebraska. That drive, that drive to Nebraska. Ooh, flat. Ooh, good lord. It's kind of probably like driving being in Florida without the palm trees. I'm more than a guess. So, you know. so, you know, there's, there's, there, there's, uh, you know, New York Comic Con is good. I've been to Baltimore Con. You know, Baltimore Con's very good. It's a very good small town show. Philly, when Philly had a con, had a Wizard World Con there. Um, we got a Wizard World Con down here now. Um, there's a couple, you know, MegaCon. MegaCon is probably the best con in the southeast. If you're, if you, if you want to, I always tell people this is this is this is like it's kind of the beginning of con season for, for uh, actually they do a pretty decent game. Orlando is a, Orlando is a very interesting town. It's a great vacation town, but there's also a lot of cool geek related stuff in Orlando. I mean, besides like the Disney stuff, there's a lot of just like you know Full Sail University. If you've never seen Full Sail, you don't know what Full Sail is. It's a great. See, now I put the notes. Damn it. Uh, Full Scale is a great university that teaches 3D animation. It's very, it's, it's like one of the top five schools on the planet. Um, it's it's amazing. I mean, I've wanted to go to Full Sail, but man, oh man, oh man, they. I mean, the people who go to Full Sail are usually guys who go and start running, uh, running uh, video game companies. It's it's that kind of good. I mean, Full Sail is. I mean, straight out legit. I was impressed when I went there. I mean, I knew about the reputation. I'd heard people say, but going to see the school and seeing it actually on its campus, amazing. Full sale is no joke. I mean, you gotta, that's no joke. Gotta check that out. It's awesome. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you can get down to MegaCon, it's usually in March or February. It's a great con to get to. I mean, especially since, I mean, most of you will probably still be under snow. And in Orlando, it'll be warm. Let me phrase that. It'll be warm for you. For me, it'll be cold. You know, because, you know, February in Orlando is probably in the 50s. Yeah, maybe in the 50s and 60s. You know, and that's, cold. that's that's frigid weather for me. It's healthy. I know you're all laughing, but no, nah, dude. If it, gets, if it gets below, you know, I'm not going to lie. If it gets below 70, like 60, 68, 67 is where I start going, ooh, I need to put on a coat. Yeah, that's how, that's how, I've been here, I've been here, you know, forever, man. <laughs> 50 in Detroit is shorts weather. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, yeah, you're not, you won't, I said, people who from everywhere else will love Orlando at the time. It's nice, it's bright, it's sunny, there's lots of stuff to do. So, yeah, check out Orlando. I'm a, except, go down for American Con, you'll like it. Uh, Tennessee, I've never been to a Tennessee Con. I've heard people who like Tennessee Cons. I know, um, who's out there that knows a couple of cons? Uh, I know Memphis, my family happened to live in Memphis. I missed a couple cons there. They had a couple of comic book stores. They're not horrible, not great, but nothing that horrible. You know, they had some gaming stuff too, so that's good. That was kind of good. They also had a store in Memphis that I can't, I, I can never forget this because they are one half gaming store, one half knitting store. That's right, knitting yarn, yarn. You know, and that's what they did. And it was like 
uh, scrapbooking and other stuff. And I thought it was the weirdest combination I'd ever seen. And I, they went out of business. But I don't think they went out of business because they didn't sell like they should have. I think they went out of business because the location they had was sucked. And I'm sure the rec they're paying was really crazy because they ran on a, a super duper main street. And it was like, oh. And you could tell, like, this place is like, this is a nice place to be in. You're probably paying an arm and a leg for this place. So, but you know how that goes. But yeah, cons, cons are lots of fun, man. Cons are lots of fun to go to. I think that if you can go to a con, just go. Just first time, just trying to soak it up. Do local cons first, you know. And if you're a publisher, go to cons and look at what's on the table. Look how it's organized. Take pictures. Take pictures of the booths. Just from, oh, yeah, it's cool to take a picture of a booth. It looks nice, but take pictures to study. You know, there's, the guys who actually know what they're doing, there's a science to it. There's a science where things belong. There's a science where the signs look the way they do. Take pictures. Take as many pictures as you can. Use that information. Because you're going to need that when you design your table. Because you're going to go home. You're going to see some people at these tables. You're going to see people crowded around certain tables and certain tables not so crowded. You're going to see some of the stuff you like and some stuff you hate. Mix and match. Get yourself ready so when you go to the con, you're prepared. You have your books out a certain way. They look a certain way. They're at a certain angle. You can see stuff. Your name's in the back. You know, use this to do your research. That's what it's for. That's what you're here for. All right. It's 940 and I'm tired and i got to still take the garbage out and make Lucas's lunch. So I'm getting off this whole con thing. So next week, Monday, we'll start with fun new mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know what we're going to talk about this next week. I haven't decided yet, but it will be fun and interesting. Maybe we'll go back to some more publishing stuff. Uh, officially, I have decided that Tuesday will definitely be our third-party our third party publisher uh, breakdown. We're going to take a business, break it down, see what we like, go through it. That's definitely that's, that's going to be that's going to be permanent from now on. Also, Wednesday is going to definitely be comic book day. Uh, that will definitely be permanent. We're going to talk about the comic book business, the industry, and what they're doing wrong, because they're always doing something stupidly wrong. And it's always kind of stuff that we, as publishers, can also learn from. Oh, that being said, what other fun stuff? I don't. I still don't know what Monday and Thursday are going to be. I'd like Thursday to be a little more interactive. I still would like to figure out a way to do this where I can interview somebody back and forth, like you do with Google Hangout. And maybe, <clears throat> just maybe, we might just have to go to a Google Hangout format for that, and then just put the videos up on Facebook. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe we do three days of. Uh, Facebook Live, and then Thursday we do Google Hangout. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll. So, that's it tonight. As always, first things first. First things first. Go to the Google, oh, good Lord, the YouTube page. Subscribe. Some of you have subscribed recently. I really do appreciate that. This is very, very important. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to subscribe. Subscribe. If Even if you don't do publishing, subscribe. I might tell a funny story you haven't heard about. I mean, I got tons of great stories. Be surprised. Just, oh my God, just great stories. But go and subscribe to YouTube. We need the numbers. That cannot. We need the numbers. It's incredibly important. It helps us in the long run. Also gives us great analytics that helps us make a better show. Very important. So if you can do us a huge favor, dun, 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 do that. That's what I would like. Um, Scott Fernandez says I'll be growing roots in the Sagamore Ballroom next week. Yes, he probably will be. You guys are gonna be tired. There's gonna be a lot of standing in line. I will not be doing that. Please take a lot of pictures. Put them up so all of us who are not at Gen Con can see. But we do appreciate that. And some cool stuff could happen. And we just want to see stuff. You know, hook us up. Hook us up. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. You all have a good weekend. And I'll see you on Monday. I think that's it. Now I'm going to go back and finish watching my Kung Fu movie. Uh, This is The Kid with a Golden Arm, which is one of the two greatest Kung Fu movies ever made. Number one being, of course, Five Deadly Venoms. Both Shaw Brothers productions. You can find them on Netflix. Go check out Netflix, watch these two movies, you'll understand why they're awesome. Yes, they are in Chinese. No, they're not dubbed. Yes, you'll have to read subtitles. Will you enjoy it? Yes. Um, Watch The Kid with the Golden Arm first. Then watch Five Deadly Venoms. Five Deadly Venoms is the opus, the the greatest, the greatest of the great. No joke. I'm not front with that. That's what I'm talking about. All right, everybody. Have a good weekend. Talk to you later.